What's going on guys? My name is Todd. Welcome to No Show Drift. On today's episode, we've got a big juicy one for you. We are going to be doing a manual conversion on the new R31. Now, this is going to be a much longer video than I've probably been putting out in the past, but it's because I want to do a proper how-to. Like, I want you to be able to come to this video, watch it start to finish, and then know how to do a manual conversion, or even just watch it while you're doing it, so you know what to do. So we're going to get into the really nitty gritties of it. So, yeah. First things first, I'm going to show you all the parts that you will need to do the manual conversion. All right, let's get into it. Okay, this is everything that we need laid out. I will go through each individual item. Okay, first, you need a gearbox. The gearboxes that you can use in the manual conversion to go straight into an R31 is an RB30 box out of an R31, obviously. R32 boxes, any R32 box will work, whether it's turbo or NA, and then you can use NA, R33, or R34 boxes. They will all bolt straight up to the RB30 with the same push type clutch and will work with the standard R31 manual tail shaft. And don't forget about a shifter as well. Some people will sell gearboxes without shifters. Yeah, make sure that you get the correct shifter. I'm pretty sure, well, I know for a fact that R34 shifters are different to R31 shifters. Unsure about R33s and R32s. Safe bet would be to use an R31 shifter. Next big one is a manual tail shaft out of an R31. Any R31, the manual tail shaft will work. You can't use R32 or R33 ones. Has to be an R31 one, or you can just go get a single piece one made up. Another big obvious item is a clutch. Um, I have used secondhand ones in the past, <laughs> and they've been fine. But yeah, if you wanna buy new, they're not too expensive. Uh, but yeah, make sure you get yourself a good clutch. Obviously, to match up with the clutch, you need a flywheel. Get it machined if you're doing a new clutch. I have so many times and just never machined my flywheels and just sanded them a little bit and thrown them in. It's been completely fine. But don't do my dodgy things. The recommended thing to do is to get it machined like I have here. That is not rust on there. It is the coating the machine has put on there to stop it from rusting. So don't freak out. I will wipe it off before we put it in the car. Next item is a manual R31 gearbox cross member. You cannot use the auto one. Next item that you need is a clutch pedal out of a manual R31. I haven't heard of anyone using any other clutch pedals before. I've always just used R31 clutch pedals. On that same note, a manual brake pedal. In every manual conversion that I've ever done, I have just cut down the auto pedal and then put a little manual pedal boot on it and it has worked completely fine. This came with a bunch of other parts that I got. So I'm gonna give it a crack this time to put a proper manual brake pedal in. This next part is the clutch master cylinder, the clutch hard line, and the clutch soft line. Usually they'll stay together like this straight out of an R31, but you know, if you just had the master cylinder, you could make up your hard line and make up your soft line, but this is all the stuff out of a factory manual R31 that you see here. Next is the gear shifter surround. This is the rubber boot that bolts to the floor and stops any road dust and muck and noise coming through. I have seen people not use these before. These boots are hard to come by in good condition, but it just ends up being quite noisy in the cab if you don't have one of these. This is the shift boot that sits like in the center console to make it look pretty. Again, you can use an auto one, it just looks dumb, and then you won't have a little boot around it. But yeah, this is just a factory manual boot. Next is a manual R31 ECU. You can use the auto ones, there is no issue with it. The only difference is, is I can't quite remember exactly. There is a difference, but they both work. I think on D cell, there's something different, but I've never had an issue. Use an auto one, use a manual one, whatever. Next is a gearbox shroud plate thingy. This is the top of an automatic one. I did not get a manual one with this conversion. Pretty sure the auto ones work, but usually there's a second piece that goes underneath that like cuts apart. You'll see when we pull the auto box out. But yes, you need one of these plates. I'm fairly sure you can use the automatic one. We will find out very soon. This is an obvious one, clutch slave cylinder. I bought brand new. Make sure you have the pin with it as well. I have tried doing these without the pins with bolts and stuff, it never works. You need to get this pin. I'll blast through these three really quick. Clutch fork boot, clutch fork with the clip, throw out bearing carrier, with the clip that has the old bearing on it, here is a new bearing. Next, this is a clutch alignment tool and manual spigot bush that came with the clutch kit. You need a manual spigot bush. You cannot use the auto one. You need to pull the auto one out. We will get to that. It's a whole last thing. Little obvious one, gear shifter. This is a nice little 
Factory R31 manual one that sounds painted red. But yes, they're my favourite little shifters to use, but obviously you can use any aftermarket one you want. This is one that people forget all the time, flywheel bolts. You cannot use the automatic flex plate bolts, you need RB flywheel bolts. You can get them brand new for like $90 off eBay and stuff like that. Another thing that people forget as well, bell housing bolts and clutch plate bolts. The auto bell housing bolts will not work. These bolts here are actually from a Z32, and I'm just hoping that they will work somehow or I can use some of them. Worst case, run down to Bunnings, get your sizes, get them from there. I've done that a few times. And yes, don't forget about the clutch plate bolts. You can buy them uh, off eBay as well, or you can just source your own bolts to hold the clutch plate to the flywheel. Okay, this is a bonus round. This is stuff that you don't technically need, but this is new things I have bought to replace some old stuff. Solid gearbox mount. Great mod. Mounts it solidly to the car. Solid engine mounts. People say that they make cars vibrate and feel like crap, but more my experiences with R31s, it's felt completely fine. There's not that much more vibration, maybe a little bit, but nothing to like whinge and moan about. The benefits outweigh the negatives with these solid mounts. Having no movement in the engine of the gearbox is just brilliant. For these NA cars, awesome things. I would recommend them to anybody. 100 bucks off eBay. I think about 40 to $60 from GK Tech. You just order the R32 one. It's exactly the same. Comes with all the bolts and everything that you need. Another part from GK Tech is the solid shifter bush. Again, you don't need it, but it gets rid of the plastic one and replaces it with a solid brass one. And this is an annoying one, but I grabbed it anyway. It's the steering bush. It has nothing to do with the manual conversion, but I got it and I'll do it anyway. It replaces the rubber bush in the steering, makes it much more direct. Bit of a fiddly job. Off GK Tech, I think it's about $20. Alright, first step, which seems a bit obvious, but I will show you how I like to do it when I do one of these manual conversions, is jacking the car up. Jack the front of the car up from the engine crossmember. Make sure you don't jack up off the sump, and definitely don't jack up off the bottom radiator support. It will bend. I have done that many times, foolishly. Engine crossmember, 100%. I like to put my front jack stands underneath my lower control arms. Pulls them forward, makes them nice and wide so that you have as much room around the gearbox as possible. It can get annoying going off the chassis rails or the sills because of how close to where you're working the jack stands end up. Gets in the way, really annoying. This is a great spot for them. Other spots you can do is at the front of the chassis rail behind this hook as well. Uh, you could also just go straight off the engine cross member, but it does put it close to the gearbox again. Yeah, just wherever you want to do it, but this is a good spot that I like to do it. Thought I'd just mention that. You can use jack stands on the rear, but I like to either take the front wheels off, put them under the rear wheels, or just use some spare wheels that you have to throw under the back wheels. All right, car is up on the jack stands. Now, all the first stuff I will do are things that are not underneath the car. So in the engine bay and in the interior with the shifter and stuff like that. So let's get into it. There's no real particular order with these first things. You can do them however you want to, but first step I'm doing is remove the battery. Once you remove the battery and the battery tray from out under there, you will find these four plugs. Unplug all of them. All of these plugs are to do with the auto and we want to get rid of all the auto wiring. So once you unplug them, they go down through all of this wiring here, which is the alternator, starter motor and gearbox wiring. These plugs are just pretty standard. They've got the little clip here that you can push in. Some of them will come undone with your fingers. Other ones like this, you push that little pad there. You might need a screwdriver to help you undo those, like that. Again with this one. Easy as. Next, you just wanna undo these cable ties. Some of them you'll have to cut, depending if someone's f***ed with it before. Some of them have these reusable clips where you just, like that, you can keep those. As you can see, these three wires are now separate from the rest of the starter motor wiring. They run down to the gearbox. We will address them once we get underneath the car. 
Next step, we come to the inside of the car. We want to pull off this surround and this automatic gearbox shifter surround. These just unclip like that. The next you want to pull out is this surround here. There's two screws here and two screws underneath this part. So we're going to have to pull the center console out and then pull this out. So to pull the center console out, you've got two screws down the bottom there and one screw at the front. Phillips head, pull it out. With those three screws undone, this will just lift out. Okay, to pull the surround out, we're taking these two screws and these two screws out. And there's one screw on the side right up the back there, as well as mirrored on the other side, on the driver's side. All right, with those six screws out, this whole surround will just come out later, and that usually doesn't fall out, but it did. Next is pulling this shifter out. Two screws here, one, two, and then six screws around here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, with those two screws out of the shifter, that will just come off like that. And then this, I'm pretty sure, this comes up like that. This shifter rod bracket thing is attached to the gearbox, so you can do this either way around. Undo all this, then get under, detach that, or get under, detach that, then undo all this. All right, these next parts underneath the car, um, I'm gonna start from the front of the car and kind of work our way backwards as, as like efficiently as possible, but there might be a bit of back and forth. Anyway, I'm assuming that a lot of you data owners don't have one of these catch trays under the car anymore. I know a lot of mine never had them, but this one does. So firstly, if you do have one of these, you have to take this off. Bolt here, bolt here, up here on the cross member, and then this side on the cross member. Okay, next we want to undo the hard lines. They are mounted to kind of like the the engine block and like the sump. So there's like brackets here, here, and then a bit further up, up here. Now, with all those bolts undone, holding the automatic cooler lines, um, you can either Undo them properly from the box, uh, but I don't want to keep these. I won't resell them. Uh, so I'm just going to cut them with my favorite tool. At this point that you should be using a pair of vice grips in one hand to hold the line steady. These lines will just come out now. With a little bit of struggling. A lot of bit of struggling. There we go. Okay, this bolt here on the driver's side of the gearbox is the bolt that holds like the shifter to the gearbox. Um, just a 19 mil. Undo him. Now you should be able to just grab the shifter inside the car and just pull it out. There's a plug here. You just gotta unplug him. Ah, <sighs> and this will just lift it. All right, there's two plugs. Um, there's a second plug, but I just kind of ripped it out. We don't need it. And it all comes out, hooray. It all... Oh my God, what is wrong? What is happening? Help me! What is this? Why? Oh, there we go, it was just a cord. We're all good. And that comes out like that. Look, it's so easy. I'm like... You don't sound like an expert right now. <laughs> okay, when I said I was gonna be working from the front to the back, I lied. We're gonna start working from the back to the front now. Next step, undoing the tail shaft. There are four bolts, one, two, three, and there's one up here that you just can't, you can't quite see with this angle, but yeah. I believe this is a 14 mil on this side and it's like a, either a 15 mil or like the Imperial equivalent of a 14 mil, I can't remember, it's stupid. Just undo them dudes and then plop that guy down. All right, once you've done done those tail shaft bolts, some of these won't come out properly without taking the tail shaft out. But yeah, just disconnect your tail shaft from the diff. Sometimes it takes a little hit with a hammer. Yeah, easy as that. All right, next step to pulling the tail shaft out is undoing these two bolts here. This is like the little cross member that holds the center of the tail shaft up. Both 17 mils. Just be careful undoing these because that's the last thing holding the tail shaft in besides it being inserted into the back of the gearbox here. And that could just fall out and then you'll have a lot of fluid coming out of here. So just make sure you've got like an oil tray or something underneath here just to catch any excess automatic transmission fluid. <laughs> Ooh. Ah! 
No fluid came out. Look at that. All right, next step is undoing the automatic gearbox cross member. First thing you probably should do is undo this. This is like an exhaust mount. Mine is broken off and the exhaust moves independently of it. But yeah, you should probably take that off first. You should probably undo your extractors from the rest of the exhaust, which is this just this flange here. That'll allow the engine to slump down when we undo the gearbox cross member. If not, it stays attached to the exhaust and can put a bit of strain on it. Look, that, that's an option if you want to. I'm just worried about snapping exhaust mounts. So I'm gonna be undoing this flange, undoing this bracket, and then undoing these bolts. There's two here and there's two just on the other side. You can't quite see them, but there's two on the other side there. 17 mils, these look like 12 mils here. And I'm get, I think they're either, they're a 14 mil on that flange for the extractors bolting to the cat. But yeah, we're gonna undo that, undo this bracket, then undo the gearbox cross member. All right, next. I don't really need to do it because it's not connected anymore anyway, but I'll do it for demonstra demonstrative purposes. You want to undo this bracket here off the back of the mount. Two 12 mils. That's off there. Next step is gearbox cross member. All 17 mils. When you we undo those four bolts, you'll see this whole thing will sag down. Like I said before, keep a oil tray under here to catch any oil that's going to come out of the back of this gearbox after you've pulled the tail shaft out. Okay, so the gearbox cross member is undone. As you can see, it's all slumped down, which is what we want. And you can see where I've undone the exhaust. Well, you can see why I've undone the exhaust just because of how much that it allows it to drop. The next step from here is undoing the torque converter from the flex plate uh, and undoing bell housing bolt. So we'll get into that. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we need to get access to the torque converter bolts. So firstly, we want to undo these four bottom bolts on the bell housing. Um, they hold this plate here as well, which gives us access to the torque converter bolts. So yeah, they're off. They're 14 mils. One, two, three, four. Undo those four, uh, and then this bottom half of this sandwich plate will slip out, and we'll have access through that hole. Next, you want to undo these two bolts here on the side of the engine block. That will allow that bracket to come off, or even just loosen, so we can slip that plate out. Uh, and there's just the same, exactly the same on the other side as well. With those brackets off, I just took them off completely because it made it a little bit easier. Um, yeah, with those brackets off, this little plate here slips off. Okay, now that that bottom plate is off, you'll have access to these bolts here for the torque converter. They are a 14 mil. Uh, what you gotta do is you gotta get your ratchet here and then probably get a friend to hold the front crank bolt so that the engine doesn't turn over so you can actually get torque on this. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, next you'll need to get a breaker bar and a 28 mil socket just to go on the front of the crank bolt here. I guess you could pin it up against the side if you didn't have a friend. Uh, but yeah, just get a friend to hold this while you crack those bolts on the uh, torque converter. <coughs> cool. All right, next you wanna start undoing the rest of the bell housing bolts. The top two are the hard ones, so I'll get to them last. But there's like one on the side here, one opposite that, like mirrored on the other side of the gearbox and then the starter motor as well. So this is the bottom starter motor bolt, which these two bolts are quite easy to get to. The top starter motor bolt, you will need like an extension and to go from the engine bay, but I'll show you that in just a second after I undo these two. This bracket here just holds the automatic transmission cooler line. So once you undo this bolt, you'll be able to take that off and just throw it on the bin. All right, so we're coming from the engine bay here. Um, to get to the top bolt of the starter motor, as you can see, I've got a very long extension. I've actually 14 mil, get a long extension. It's on the top of the starter motor. And you should be able to finesse a socket onto there pretty easily. And yeah, just, just undo that guy. Yeah, once that top bolt's undone, you can just pull the starter motor back and just, just sit it there. You don't need to take it out completely. I used to take it out completely all the time, but you don't need to. Just, just sit it there in the engine bay. Uh, and yeah, you should be sweet. All right, uh, next step is you wanna oil your ratchet after you do your starter motor. Just just dump it straight into the oil pan. All right, this next bolt is in a little bit of an awkward position, but it's just here. Kind of goes on the inside of the exhaust manifold, down pipe, whatever you wanna call it. But yeah, this bolt here, another 14 mil. Undo that one, and then we're, there's only two more to go after this bolt. All right, the last two bolts that are holding the gearbox in are right on the top. Um, you can see them and like access them on this side 
from the engine bay. I have undone them from the engine bay before with spanners, but it's very fiddly, very tricky. There's another strat that I have found that involves a lot of extensions. <laughs> Um, that's the easiest way to get to them. And uh, we'll get under the car and I'll show you. All right, as you can see, I've got this big long set of e extensions together and we go up over the top to that top bolt. Uh, I usually put a wobbly on the end so I can sit it at an angle coming down. This is the best way that I've found to get these top bolts undone. All right, same as the other side. You wanna get your long ass set of extensions, feed it up to the top there, onto the bolt. There we go. Hot tip, you probably should do this before you undo all the bell housing. Uh, I, I always forget to do this, honestly. This is the dipstick tube. Um, it's a little 10 mil. Pull your dipstick out, undo this, and unattach it from the gearbox. It does get a little bit annoying when trying to pull the gearbox out with this still attached. It kind of gets caught up. So yeah, pull your dipstick out, undo this, uh, and it'll make your life a lot easier. Also, something else to do before you undo the bell housing bolts. Again, I didn't do it. I should have done it before I undo the bell housing bolts was disconnect any wiring, any plugs that are attached to it. A lot of them, like this is just auto wiring, that'll just come out with the gearbox, but this is like the speedo wire here. Probably just disconnect that so it doesn't drag anything else out when you pull the gearbox out. Just, just have a check around and just unplug anything that you can. And there'll be like little tabs that hold the wires on there. Fold all the tabs back. All right, my hot strap is using two jacks, especially when I'm by myself. Even with two people, I'd be using two jacks just because of how heavy this box is. Obviously, if you had a hoist, this would just be way easier. We can't all just live in luxury and riches like some people. So yeah, if you're doing this on the ground, these boxes are heavy. Be really careful when removing it. It's gonna be nasty. This is just gonna fall and roll and just be really careful. Make sure you're out of the line of like danger, I guess you could say. Use two jacks, get a couple of mates. I've done this a bunch of times. Yeah, just, just be careful with this step because it is the heavy, awful, dangerous step. Oh. Oh. I fuck, I stuffed it a little here. This jack's only half on. There we go. That's come away. Enough for it to lower. So we'll go a little lower this jack. And you're going to spill oil everywhere as well. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. No, 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 oil. Uh, so as you saw there, I did a really bad job of pulling the gearbox out. That was not the safe, correct way to do it. Um, I positioned the front jack terribly. I was too consumed with, I don't know what else I was doing, but yeah, I just put it in the wrong spot completely. Um, and it rolled off. You saw, you saw what happened. Um, oil went everywhere, the, it fell to the ground. It was not a safe way to do it. As much as I want to put it back in to show you how to do it properly, I'm just not gonna. Just use that as a how not to. Don't do it that way. You get more mates, position the jacks better, use a hoist, be smart about it. Don't be me about it because I, <laughs> I didn't do good. Um, but yes, gearbox is out. That's great. That's kind of, you know, uh, the, the major part for this, obviously. Um, uh, next part we're going to get on to, I don't know, Let's. I'm going to assess it and we'll keep going. Yeah, so there's gearbox out, um, you don't need anything off this, uh, except for maybe if you wanted to, this big grey plug with the two wires coming out of it. I'll show you why I'm going to cut this off later, but yeah, if you want, cut this off and then you'll find out soon why I'm using it, so yeah. Alright, so next step, uh, we've got the gearbox out, which leaves us with the flex plate here. you got six bolts, uh, they're a 19mm bolt. Undo them, and then, uh, yeah, we'll move to the next part. Alright, with the flex plate off, you can um, remove this sandwich plate here. I'm just going to leave mine on because I don't have a manual one. Uh, and I'm just going to use this auto one. But yeah, usually you take that off and replace it with the manual one, which is like one complete piece that comes down here. But I don't have it. I'm just going to use the auto one. Don't be like me. <laughs> then after that, is the fun part, this. This here, this little ring, this guy here, this bush, is the automatic spigot bush. And we need to remove that and put a manual one in there. Now, there's this thing that people love to say where you can stuff a bunch of bread in here, keep from pressing it in, and it eventually pops this out. I have tried this before. It takes so long 
and I've never actually had it succeed for me. There is no lip behind here. This, the, in, the inner diameter of this sits flush with the, with the hole in the back of the crank. There, there is no lip to stuff stuff behind it. I have used bread on a manual one to get a manual bush out, which has space behind it for the bread to compress on the back, and it works. But this one is literally perfectly flush. People will tell you, you can use bread. <laughs> nah, you can't. I, I will look, maybe you could if you sat there for ages doing it, but I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna even try and show you that you can't. Go buy one of these from Repco for $50. It's a little bearing puller. I will show you how it works. It takes two seconds to pull one of these bearings out with one of these. I'm not doing the bread. Fuck you all. You really want the claws to tighten down really hard so it actually digs in behind the bearing properly. Um, yeah, so usually you gotta like hold this part here and then turn this to get it tight enough. And I even end up putting a spanner on the end of this. A shifter on the end of that, and that will pull that out. There you go, easy as that. Like, that was less than five minutes, and it's out. Easy done, you would have been there for an hour with bread, trying to get that thing out of there. 50 bucks from Repco, get yourself a little bearing puller. Best thing I've bought for this kind of stuff. All right, next thing is we'll put the manual spigot bush in there. All right, this is the manual spigot bush. It's a little, a little brass dude. They usually come with like clutch kits and stuff, but if you are doing it with a second-hand clutch, or for some reason just don't have one of these, you can just get them from Repco. I think they're like $8 or something like that. Um, being brass, they are porous. So, hot tip, get your little oil bucket, dip them in, dip them in there, get them nice and oily. Usually give them a little squeeze with the oil in the center, just to get into all the little pores. Nice and slippery. Then I get a little 14 mil socket. The 14 mil socket is literally the perfect size to bang that into the back of the crank. Yeah, get a little hammer and smack it in, I'll show you. All right, so get your little bush. I'm gonna be putting it right into the back here, like this. Usually it'll just hold itself in there if you give it enough force. Get a little tap with the socket. There you go. Yeah, you can see that's all the way set in there. You'll hear the sound difference for when you're banging that in. Um, yeah, so that's all you got to do with your little manual spigot push. Next thing is a flywheel. Don't forget, you need manual flywheel bolts. The automatic flex plate bolts will not work. I'm just putting a couple in there to hold it in there for now, but you also want to put Loctite on each one of your bolts as well. Uh, and then you want to uh, torque these to manufacturer specs. Talk to spec. But in all seriousness, you probably should talk these to manufacturer spec. I don't ever do it and I've never had any issues, but my advice to you is to do it. And if it falls off because you didn't do it, it's not my fault. This is a disclaimer. Talk these down. Please ignore the little rusty pressure plate. Um, I promise you everything else is in fine condition. It's been sitting for a little bit, so I guess a little bit of moisture got onto the outside of it. It won't affect anything. Please don't judge me in my clutch. Next step, we want to be tightening down the clutch plate bolts. You don't need too much torque on these. They're actually quite delicate. I have snapped a few of these bolts before by hand, just not concentrating on what I was doing. They've just snapped in half. I'm sure there's a torque spec that you should do them to, which we will be doing that today. <coughs> uh, yeah, torque to spec, people. All right. Next step, we're gonna put the gearbox in. This gearbox has been pretty much disassembled with all the exterior parts, um, so I can at least show you how to put everything together. First step, pull your shifter out, and you can do it two ways. You can either undo this plate, you just have to reseal either the gasket or gasket goo when you put it back on, or you can undo these circlips and slip this out if you don't wanna to have to stuff around with resealing this. But I have sealant, so I'm just gonna whip this guy off before we put it into the car or anything like that. All right, now we'll show you how to put the throughout bearing and bearing carrier and the clutch fork in, as well as the clutch fork boot, one up. <laughs> first things first, you put your ball here, that the fork pivots off. He's a little rusty, but we'll just put some grease on that, as well as put a bit of grease on this as well, on your shaft, just so it um, doesn't make any squeaking or binding or anything like that. Especially grease this ball because it can create just the most annoying squeak in the clutch pedal whenever you push it in. Um, I've had cars that squeak on this ball and it's just so annoying. It's the worst. So yeah, make sure you put some grease on there. 
I usually only put a very small amount of grease on the spline just because it's so close to the clutch. You don't want to contaminate it. I usually put a bit on and then just pretty much wipe it off just so it has a remnant of grease on there. First you want to get your clutch fork, make sure you got that clip on the inside to clip to the ball. Get your thread bearing and carrier. Yep, so you clip those together like this. Like that. Slip that into the hole and kind of finesse it. Ah, comes apart. It's a bit fiddly this. Like that. Clip your fork onto the ball. And then there you are. There you have it. Then don't forget your boot, that just goes on the outside. All right, once you've got your clutch fork in and your throw bearing and throw bearing carrier in there, you're ready to put this gearbox in the car. Before you do so, you need to sort out your bell housing bolts. Now, the auto ones will not work. They're too, I'm pretty sure they're too short. Yeah, they are, they're too short. So you need six bolts that are 60 mil long from like the base of the socket nut part to the end. 60 mil long. I like to put a little split washer on there as well, just to help hold it on. Need six of those. Next, you'll need two of these that are about 25 mil long. One needs a nut on it, like this. What, uh, one of those just goes up here with the nut on it. The other one threads into the gearbox from the engine side into there. Now, I just gotta run around in each one of them. The top two are long ones. This next one down here is long. This one is long with a nut. This one is just one of the short ones, no nut. This one here is a long one with a nut. This one here is a short one with a nut. And then this one up here, just below where the starter motor goes, that is long. The starter motor bolts are exactly the same as the ones that you pulled out with the auto. So you can just reuse those bolts. All right, let's get this gearbox in. All right, I don't know how this angle's gonna look, but uh, not the best I can do, I think. Especially with one person, but yeah, we'll give it a crack. You kind of want to rotate it and point starter motor hole upwards. I found that's the best way to get it to kind of slip up. Slipped in the first part. Oh, oh, nearly dropped it. Nearly dropped it. Oh, oh I've rolled the jack onto my hair. Just checking the angle up and down. It's getting a bit high in the back. So I'm just going to lower the jack down a little bit. You can kind of just look up at the engine block and the bell housing. You can, you can see that it's uneven. There we go, that's better. Oh, there we go. The spline, the input shaft must have just been off. Must have just been off. Righto, that's in. Just throw your, uh, I usually throw the two side bell housing bolts in. Tighten them up just to hold it up there. Then I pull the jack out or take your pressure off, whatever you're doing, holding it or jacking it up. Right, now with the top two bolts, again, you wanna just get like a bunch of ex long extensions. Um, you can usually start them with your hand, two bolt, and to do them up, just extensions and a wobbly on the end like we undid them. Uh, it's the easiest and best way to do it. All right, next we wanna put these like brackets on that they bolt. The ones we took off for these lower bolts before. One bolt, one end bolts onto the block and the other to the gearbox. Ah! Started when I nearly dropped on my face. Oh dear. It's just fouling on here because the engine's slumped back so much. So I'm just gonna have to jack it up. Jack up the gearbox to get these brackets in. I usually like to leave the two bolts on the block loose um, because you can kind of move this around. At this point, if you've had the manual sandwich plate, you wouldn't have to worry about this step. But like I said, I'm being a dodgy mofo and I'm using the auto sandwich plate. Yeah, so just don't forget, using the auto one, don't forget to put this lower part back up in here. I'm going the other way around this one, I'm doing up the gearbox ones first because why not? All right, that's all the bell housing bolts done. Uh, they're all tightened up, real nice. Next thing, 
called bolt our starter motor back up. Uh, usually I just put in the bottom bolt first and then the opposite of what we did before where we fed the long extensions into the engine bay and did up the top one. Um, I'm not going to film myself putting the starter motor back in. I don't have a good spot to put the camera and there's only one of me so I can't get someone to film while I do it. So yeah, just watch the footage of me taking it out in reverse and then yeah, you'll figure it out. So while we're down here around the starter motor and bellhousing and stuff, we'll put the slave cylinder for the clutch on. It's easy as. You can actually use two of the bell housing bolts from the auto box for this. So yeah. So yeah, repurpose those into holding on your slave cylinder. Okay, next step is to put in the gearbox cross member. This is gonna be a bonus little step that I'm gonna show you. We're gonna put the GK Tech solid mount in. When you're putting this guy in, you've gotta attach it to the cross member first, then bolt the cross member with the mount. Bolt that to the box. And you got two 12 mils in here. Undo them. Old mate comes off like that. You just note where this, these bolts are facing, which is to usually towards the back of the car. Just face the hump the same direction as that. Two smaller Allen key bolts. Easy as. Tighten them up and you're all done. Right, next we're gonna put the uh, UMAS cross member in. I think I might have the wrong gearbox cross member. Maybe. We'll see. Oh, there we go. Alright, it's just because I'd done up the gearbox mount tight to the gearbox cross member. So yeah, leave those bolts loose so this can kind of move around a little bit. Get it all into place. Probably do up your cross member and then tighten up your bolts. My bad. Okay, so I'm sure there's someone that's gonna maybe get in the comments and tell me that I'm wrong and that I'm gonna murder many families for what I'm about to say. But when you put the manual gearbox cross member in, only one of the holes will line up. The one at the front of the car. There is a hole that will miss, it will miss this stud, and then it'll line up with this hole in the chassis. Now, you can weld a bolt in here, and put your own nut on there, do all that sort of stuff, to get two bolts in there, but I do not. I have never done this. I have always have only ever run one bolt in my gearbox cross members and I have never ever ever had any issues ever but if you do run one bolt and your whole car falls apart and you die don't blame me uh, you probably should have two bolts on each side all I'm saying is that I've only ever put one bolt in and I've never had any issues you could um yes there's nothing legally binding me to the fact that I told you to run one bolt don't sue me Okay, go back. Next, you want to put the manual towel shaft in. It's just the complete opposite of how you pulled the auto one out. Put your yoke in, then bolt up in the middle here for your center bearing, then bolt it to your diff with the four bolts. Easy as. I'm not going to show me doing that. It's just play the first part in reverse and you'll get what you need. All right, back down to the gearbox. Here we have our speedo sensor spot. Grab the speedo sensor off the automatic box. They'll just plug straight in. Mine, for some reason, has this weird wire on it that someone's put on there. I'm not going to mess with it. Screw that on to the box and then plug it in to the wire, which I'll show you in a second. Yeah, just screws on like that and then plug that into your wiring limb. So it plugs in one way. And you'll be left with like this wire, ignore that blue one, uh, this wire here. Um, there's a little few little tabs on down the side of the gearbox that you can um, just like get that to be held up properly with. And yeah, you're all done with the wiring, at the gearbox anyway. All right, now for the fun bit, uh, we're gonna be putting the clutch pedal in. First things first, this panel underneath the steering wheel here, remove that, um, it'll just give you a little bit of extra room, be able to see up in there a little bit better. Next, you'd probably wanna do your brake pedal. Now, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have always just cut the brake pedal in half. You kind of take your pad off, this, get, the, get a, a uh, like a brake pedal pad and you can kind of place it over here and measure it up I think it's about here you cut through at an angle and then you can just put a manual brake pedal pad over it and it works fine the kit that I bought the dude included a manual brake pedal with it so I'm gonna give us a, give a little crack now to put the manual brake pedal in there but yeah you can just cut this guy yeah I've had no issues with that in the past all right kind of crack the shits we're trying to pull the auto brake pedal out so I'm just gonna go back to basics and just cut it I, I don't it's all the same i even compared the 
manual brake pedal to it and it looks like it's exactly the same shape so I'm just gonna cut it it's gonna make my life so much easier way less work pull it out if you want to if you can get yourself a manual brake pedal there's the manual brake pedal pad I'm just probably gonna cut around here on the probably like along there kind of thing at a bit of an angle cut that and uh, yeah we'll see if this will fit on there we go he's all cut off now Boop. Um, this should just slip straight over just like that there we go manual brake pedal easy done with the brake pedal all sorted we're gonna move on to the clutch pedal now I'm gonna show you this vent see that vent that that round vent we need to get that out of the way because directly above that is the one of the bolts that holds a clutch pedal in so I'll show you what I do I put a uh, ratchet strap over it and ratchet it up to the headrest on the driver's seat. Yeah, so like wrap it around the headrest down under here around him and uh, yeah, just give it a little tighten Yeah, it just pulls it out of the way a little bit You'll be able to get to the bolt that's like up behind it here a lot easier All right, I'll show you that bolt now. All right, as you can see I've got my little head under here That's the hole that we you can see our ratchet strap at our vent or tube whatever and there is the hole that we bolt through so we're just gonna pull out, there's a, you can see that, that's where the clutch pedal goes as well. We're just gonna pull out a plate from the engine bay and then uh, we'll get back under here and I'll, I'll show you how to do this. So before we put the clutch pedal in, we wanna take this plate out here, this guy here, it's the right of the brake booster. Two 12 mil bolts, undo him from this side. Then there's like, a, it's like a sandwich plate. So the plate on the inside will then be able to come out. Uh, but yeah, two 12 mils, whip that out and then we can start doing the master and clutch pedal. There's the other side of that plate. Uh, we can now, that, that other side's undone. You can just like pull him out like that. Now we can put our clutch pedal in. All right, this is gonna be very tricky to film, but here's our brake pedal. These two bolts go through where we just pulled that plate out. And if you can see that hole just in the middle there, that lines up with the hole that we moved the vent out of the way with. Get yourself, I believe this is an M8 bolt. It's got like a 12 mil head with a washer on it and he can go up in there and hold it up. Don't know if I'm gonna be able to film this properly with me putting it in, because it's a very awkward spot to get to, but I will do my best, okay? There you go, you can see those two studs going into those holes. So I've located there, and then yeah, we're just gonna put our bolt up through there. I'm not gonna film that because it's just gonna be a bit too hard for me, but yeah, that bolt goes straight up, get a little extension into a hole, into that one we showed, do that up, and then you can go around the other side and we'll put the master on. Once we've got that bolt, that top bolt done up, and in there, I'd probably maybe lose it, leave it a little bit loose. Time to put master cylinder in. This has obviously still got the hard line and soft line attached to it. As you can see here, we've got our little pin with our, the pin that goes through here, that attaches to the pedal. Up in there, you just want to, before you do any of this, pull that out. Pull that out, because when you slide this in, it needs to not be there. So pull that out first and put it aside. Don't lose that. All right, I've taken the line off because that just wasn't working. So we just put this guy in here. Um, could there be something inside the hole where that fork needs to be orientated a certain way? This has to be up and down when you go in so it slots into the pedal. Oh, there we go. There we go. Onto those two studs. And then just put those bolts on. Nuts. Okay, so the master cylinder is in. There's a little bit more we have to do on the inside of the car, but I'll show you that in just a second. I've fed up this line from the bottom, from underneath, and easy as just wind that into the side there. I think it's usually like an 11 mil on here, but it depends if you get that made up or not. But yeah, once that's done, we'll go into the car and I'll uh, show you what the next step with this master cylinder is. All right, next step, we want to put the pin that connects the, the clutch pedal to the master. So there's the rod for the master. You can see coming through the firewall. Here's our clutch pedal. So we put this little pin through there. If you don't have a pin, um, which I have sometimes gotten manual conversions where these aren't in it, you can just put a nut and bolt through it. But yeah, if you get the pin, all right. So yeah, that just goes up through here. And there's usually like a little split pin to hold it in there. You won't be able to see me put that in, but yeah, don't forget to put your split pin in if you do have one. And with that, we have all three pedals in. That's all you have to do underneath the dash. You're all done. So you can put your little panel back in here, put that all back together. You might need to adjust the clutch. It's like a little adjustment on there where you want the engagement to be, but that's personal preference. But yeah, for now, we are all done under here. Hooray, three pedals. All right, next step. I kind of messed up a little bit here just because it was a bit of a brain fart, but I want to attach the clutch line to the slave, but this line doesn't spin or pivot. You need to spin this whole thing around to turn it onto this. So yeah, just when you're doing it, put your slave cylinder on after you put your line on. Uh, yeah, so I'll just, uh, I'm gonna undo this, spin it onto that and then do it back up. This bracket, I don't know if you can see just here, there's a little hole just here and this bracket just bolts to the chassis rail and then that line goes across to your slave. All right, um, I'll do that and then we'll move on. Get our bracket attached to the chassis line. It's a little bit twisty, but he'll be okay. And then our slave, that's all done there. Yeah, once you've done that, 
You can actually bleed the clutch now, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'm going to just finish off the stuff in the interior and with the shifter for the gearbox. So we'll go back into the car now. All right, this next bit I'm going to do is optional. It is replacing this little shifter bush here. And this is like a plastic piece. It's pretty old. GK Tech make a brass replacement. I think it's like $7 or something. It's just the same as the S chassis ones they have on there. You don't have to if you don't want to, but people say that it makes it shift a little nicer. It makes it a little bit more solid. It's a little, not tricky to get off, but you just have to be forceful. Put a little bit of grease on the inside of that to pop it onto that ball. It is metal on metal, so sometimes I've found these pretty difficult to clip on. I've actually had to spread these little dudes, like the little prongs, put it on, then, then crush it again to get them to get on there properly. But we'll just see how we go. Oh. No, that went on. That went on fine. New little bush on that dude. All right, next we're putting our rubber shift boot that bolts to the floor on. Oh, it's a bit tight over this. Oh, there we are. No, that's wrong. I'm supposed to sit up over that. No, I went too far. There we are. All right, next we're putting our little plastic surround back on this. Just kind of opposite of how you took it out. Oh, two screws down the side here. Couple in the front, couple in the back. Get your leather boot straight over the top. And a clip right in. But, oh, oh, I don't have clips on this. Oh, well, all the clips are busted. That sucks. Huh, every one but one is busted. Oh, well, if yours aren't busted, I'm sure it'll just clip in like that. But mine is, so we'll just leave it like that, I guess. <laughs> Next, just put your center console back in, and uh, yeah, your interior is done. You're all set. And of course, we can't forget, best shifter in the world. Stock R31 shifter. Beautiful. Incredible. So let's put red on this one. I don't know why they're not red like that usually. Interior done. All right, now onto the wiring side of things. Very simple to bridge the neutral. That's what you need to do to get it to start. Just this plug here with the two wires. If you saw earlier, I cut off the plug off the gearbox so I could just like plug it in and then splice the two together. I have lost that plug. <laughs> I don't know what I've done with it, but yeah, I'm just gonna cut these two wires, splice them together and boom, you've bridged the neutral. That's all you gotta do with the series threes. Series ones and twos are different. The series ones and twos go onto the R31 wiki. There is a full walkthrough on how to bridge the neutral for a series one and two. Also, I will talk about the reverse lights. Now, one thing, I completely forgot about the beginning of this video is that if you want to have your reverse lights working, you need the gearbox loom out of the manual car. I didn't get that. I've never wired up the reverse lights on any of these, but if you are trying to pass a blue slip or something like that, you will need the reverse lights to work. For series ones and twos, I don't think you do. I think you can just use what you've got. For series threes, you need the loom to get the reverse lights to work. I will not be doing that. Like I said, go onto the R31 wiki. There is a full rundown of how to do a manual conversion in words on there, and it explains the wiring. It's very straightforward if you have it. I don't. I do apologize that that segment won't be in this video. I just don't have a manual loom. So, yeah. We'll just do bridge our neutral, and we'll see if we can get this thing started. I didn't end up cutting that plug off. I just made this little loop. There's just two little spade terminals in there. Neutral bridged. You can just freaking tuck that down there. Put those down there, you're all set. All right, this is pretty much our last thing that we're doing, ECU. Now on the passenger side, there's a little plastic cover. You, this is carpeted, I don't know. Usually it's the same color as the interior, but someone has carpeted this one. It looks kind of nice, I guess. It's just one screw down the bottom, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. There's our ECU. Two bolts here and here, 10 mil or a Phillips set. Now, like I said before, you can run the auto ECU. The difference is something to do with fuel on D cell, if I can remember correctly. You can just run this auto ECU, but by all means, if you can get a manual one, just do it. May as well put it in there. Ooh. And there'll just be these plugs here. There's three of them. Undo them like that, and then plug your manual one in. Easy. So once the neutral is bridged. And like I said, you don't have to put the manual ECU in to get the thing running, but you can put the manual ECU in. Uh, once that's done, it should start. So let's give it a crack, huh? Neutral. Um, I had an issue. It wouldn't start, as you saw. One of the plugs had just come out of the ECU from when I was putting it back into its position. So they're all plugged in. Let's turn it off. Very exciting. It's going to be loud um, because there's no exhaust on it. It's just extractors. So you won't be able to hear me after I start it. But let's do it. There's a fuel pump noise now. There was no fuel pump noise before because it wasn't plugged in. Wow, beautiful. We have a running manual car. It's all sorted. 
How exciting! Righto, we're done. That is everything. How exciting. Very straightforward. I've done this a lot of times, so it feels straightforward to me. It might be a little bit more daunting for someone else who hasn't done it before. Just follow these steps and you'll get it done. You'll get it sorted. It's taken me a very long time. I got sick for like a week and I had to stop doing it. And then the filming has been a lot, me having to stop and film everything. But I do it for you. I do it for my fans. You know what I mean? If, there's anything, if you've done this before and there's any more tips or there's anything that I missed or I didn't explain properly, please, by all means, go into the comments. Tell me. Let me know. I'd love to discuss it. I'd love to see other people's views on it. Um, yeah. Um, next episode, we are going to be doing the... We're going to be doing coilovers in this thing. We're doing the S13 coilovers into this car, uh, which I'm actually about to start now. But, yeah, that will be the next video that you will see. Um, check out my TikTok. Uh, uh, subscribe. Like. Comment. All those things. Yeah. Catch you later.